What's up, Mentor Generation family? I hope you uh, are On this day, I want to thank you so much for those of you who have been here all this while. Shukran sana. If you're new to this channel, karibu sana. Please subscribe to the channel so that you can get more. Uh, my purpose, my main purpose is to add value to your education as a student in Kenya and to uh, just give you tips uh, of how to succeed as a student in high school and post high school all the way to your adult life. I want to be there to walk with you through this journey. Today's episode, we are going to tackle paper two, biology KCSE exam. And here comes now the tips that I want to talk about in form uh, to handle your KCSE exam and not just form four. I'm saying this to you form threes, form twos, and form ones. In fact, form ones are the luckiest to get this information early. It will help them to uh, polish themselves up in, in readiness for the national exams. Now, paper two has two sections, section A and section B, as you are all aware. Section A has 40 marks, section B has 40 marks. Section B is what I'm going to dwell on more. It has two sides of it. There is the biostatistics, which talks, which uh, query you on data and interpretation, that is through graphs. And then there is the essay, uh, questions that also come up uh, in this paper on the graphs the graphs are easy peasy easy to draw as easy as abc master uh, the skills that you need to master here are the ones for the axis in plural now we we call it axis that is the x and y axis there is the plotting the skills for plotting the curve and the curve interpretation which are going to all talk about now on the graphs so on the graphs, uh, you will be given data in a table, and those data have variables. Probably there it could be uh, maybe the rate of transpiration and absorption against time. It could be uh, maybe one of uh, the rate of enzyme reaction against temperature, or it could be one of the rate of growth against time. Whatever graphs you have before you, there are certain rules that cut across. For example, in biology, you, you don't have to always start your graphs at origin unless the data you have uh, prompts that you do that. What do I mean? It means that if you have your data in a table that has zero figures, then it means you must have the zero in your graph. If that is not the case, then you can always choose a scale that allows you to begin from the lowest value or the lower limit of what you have in both the x and y axis. Either way, never start, never, never use uh, in your scales, never use multiples of three. You're not going to be able to plot them well in the unit squares, right? And the other thing is make sure your scale is workable, that you should accommodate all the data given. The other one is the scale must be uniform. It must be uniform all across the values that you have. And on the axis, the y-axis is always the dependent variable. Remember, the y-axis is the this one. And the x-axis is that one, all right? The horizontal one is the independent variable. And many times, you will be told to plot one against the other. Label the graphs, that's important. Label the, the axis, sorry. For example, if it is the rate of uh, transpiration against time, then transpiration on the y-axis, label there, rate of transpiration. And then on the x-axis, label it time. There are marks for that. Do not forget to put them. On plotting, use a small x, one that does not overlap, or, or not really overlap, but one, one does that, that does not pass and go to the micro squares you have. Let it just be a dot that is very, very distinct and small. Do not use small uh, small dot. Do not, do not, you know, do not circle. Some students are very funny. When they're doing the graphs, they, they put a, a, a dot and then they start, you know, making the dot, I don't know whether visible or bigger. That is not allowed. Use a small X and let all the plotted points be the correct plotted points. On the curve, draw with free hand i would advise just use free hand unless machine unless machine was sana sana but ato kitumia ruler is your nekano me to me ruler be smart yeah okay and then it must be smooth many times the graphs are always smooth curves unless otherwise when labeling the curve 
do not extrapolate yani graphic ifika at a certain point usijaribu kuendelea kuichora you, you know you know some figures or kupeleka chini ya maju no let it end at the time where you at the point plotted point where it it is the last point also remember to label the curves if the curve maybe you have two curves ensure that they have the correct labeling now for the curve remember. on curve interpretation uh, then uh, ensure you read from the graph do not guess do not even try to guess it from the figures on the table and in accounting for just describe what happens on y vis-a-vis -vis on x against what happens on x i wish i had time i would maybe do a few examples but i will do that in uh, other videos uh, on the shape for example if your graph is that which assumes this kind of orientation then that is described as a rapid increase if it is one that just shows that kind of orientation just next to the the horizontal axis the, the x-axis eh? if it is sorry let me just go over that again if it is somewhere here on the the way the curve looks like then it's a rapid increase if it is here it is a slow increase if it is flat it is a constant if it is that it is a slow decrease if it is that it is a rapid decrease giving reasons consider the topic first of all where the graph is coming from the area covered in the topic then remember the terminologies and then effect of the situation specific to the graph though that is really a summary of how you do you would do you you, you should uh, do your graph interpretations and i would encourage you no matter the graph you get ensure you score those eight or seven marks or six that you get in the graphs that is a plus so for any FIPA 2 exam, I want you to be confident that you're going to score on the graph. You need to have that assurance because it's an easy part, so easy, that you need not lose marks on that. The other one is on the essays. Um, in another video, I will do types of essays and how to tackle them, uh, each type, and give examples also. Uh, and like I said before, even for graphs, I will do videos of graphs and the interpretation and also do topical uh, uh, questions on section a type of questions on paper two but for now i have a bonus on this video so you watch uh, this video to the end uh this is 2008 kcc paper two exam uh, on section a number one the figure shows changes that take place during menstrual cycle in humans and then you can see the figure is here as put in the video and then part a just take time to look at the, the figure of the, the the figure there you can see it is um a figure showing the changes in the concentration of hormone in blood and the thickening of the uterine lining against days between zero to 28 days and then you can see the curves the curve f and curve g of the different hormones of the men female menstrual uh, cycle a question a there is uh, before we even go to the question look at it uh, we have this hormone that has its concentrations are rapidly increasing from day zero and are, are at peak towards day 13 12 13 and then decreasing uh rapidly again and then almost going to a constant towards the past uh, day 18 and, and then maybe going down towards the 28 and then you have curve g which has a hormone that is at a constant for the first two weeks of two weeks of the menstrual cycle increasing rapidly after two weeks and then have going to its peak towards uh that is almost the 20th day of the cycle and then rapidly decreasing towards day 28. Question A, name the hormone whose concentrations are represented by curves F and G. So F is estrogen and G is obviously progesterone. The next question, state the effects of the hormones named in A above on the lining of the uterus. Remember, this is a tight question. I think I'd covered tight questions in my other video on tackling paper one questions. Look at that. If you don't identify correctly the hormones in part A, then you lose marks for part B, even if the answers to part B are correct. That's how important it is. And I advised 
there I, I had given advice uh, so check out that video for that the effects of the hormones named in a1 above in a above sorry in, uh, on the lining of the uterus now f you know estrogen is very good at promoting the healing and repair of the endometrium wall of the uterus and g is the opposite it causes the thickening of uterine lining look at the look at the graph you can see there is that bit of that uh, the thickening of the uterine lining is actually uh, very pronounced uh, at the time when progesterone is at its is is at uh, on a rapid and uh, and the likes. And then you have question C one name the hormone which is released by the pituitary gland in high concentrations on the fourteenth day of the menstrual cycle. On the fourteenth day, we have another hormone from a different source now the pituitary gland called LH, the luteinizing hormone. And then uh, you have another what, two marks question, state two, that is C, Roman two, state two functions of the hormone named in C1 above. Look at that, another tied question. Another tied question that must go correctly on part one and two. Uh, two functions of luteinizing hormone one it is it causes ovulation we know ovulation takes place on the 14th day actually at the middle of the cycle and also induces the graphene follicle to produce or to, to not to produce but to become corpus luteum the graphene follicle of the ovary to become at the corpus luteum and then lastly state the fertile period during the menstrual cycle one mark it is between the 12th and or two, the 16th day of the cycle. 12 to 16th day of the cycle. Actually, that is the time that uh, the two hormones are transitioning and a new hormone is being introduced into the cycle. That said, uh, that is 2008, section A, paper two, number one. The other bonus that I want to give to you, my good students, you have been very good, you have been very obedient all through, is another a question on the menstrual cycle and this time an essay just to give you an example we have number 2018 ACSC paper 2 uh, 7b describe the role of hormones in the human menstrual cycle and it was awarded 15 marks